Leave it 5 one turn right heading 183. Episode 4 of the 737 MAX Report miniseries focuses heavily on the MCAS, something mentioned on already multiple occasions within the series, but is yet to be the centre of attention for a full episode. If you have not tuned into any of the previous videos discussing this report, I'd highly encourage you to do so, as it will get you pretty much up to speed on the situation and what's been going wrong. Today though, the focus surrounds MCAS, the vulnerability and more. I begin specifically with MCAS and the AOA sensor failure. As we have known for both incidents involving the 737 MAX 8, MCAS was activated which forced the aircraft to be pushed down, in turn leaving the pilots stumped and unable to correct the rapid downward trajectory. The MCAS relies on data coming from the AOA sensors. The 737 MAX has two of these AOA sensors, but the MCAS was only designed to gather data from one sensor at a time, and that's how it determines whether or not to push the nose down. Hence, if a sensor is indeed free, the repercussions are major, as MCAS would be activated and activated alike in the two incidents as we've seen already. Immediately, this for so many people was labelled as wrong. The mere fact that, say, if one of these sensors malfunctioned, the pilots would be left attempting to deactivate the MCAS is dangerous enough. As I'll discuss further in this video, you really get an idea of just how dangerous it is. Multiple engineering places were reached in this report that was released and all said the same thing, reiterating the point that a single point of failure that would activate MCAS would have never happened, especially with the severity of MCAS being activated being so high. In the accident report for JT610, it was said, the design of MCAS relying on input from a single AOA sensor made the 737 MAX's flight control system susceptible to a single failure of AOA malfunction. During the accident flight, the scenario was initiated by a single failure, a high bias in AOA sensor. This high bias resulted in several aircraft level effects, including stick shaker, airiness airspeed, and altitude displays, and MCAS after the flaps were retracted. The thing is, the vulnerability of having the MCAS rely on just one of the AOA sensors at any given time was actually brought up by a few Boeing engineers in proven emails. An internal email with Boeing said, are we vulnerable to single AOA sensor failures with the MCAS implementation or is there some checking that occurs? Responses to this indicated that MCAS was originally meant to shut down if an AOA sensor was faulty. However, in the two cases where this occurred, the Boeing 737 MAX instead saw the MCAS activate rather than shut down, the complete opposite of what was originally being said by the engineers and so on. The problem continued to be brought up back in 2016 until a MCAS review meeting was held on the 22nd of June 2016, and this was done to attempt to resolve the issue surrounding MCAS activation. At this point though, and after the meeting, notes were further discussed, it was determined that fixing this said issue was easy, and that the problem itself, that multiple Boeing engineers had come forward and explained, posted no actual real requirement violation. When it came to the faulty AOA sensor reading that triggered the MCAS, they said there was no need to redesign or to even address this issue, because the other systems would react well to the failure of an AOA sensor, or MCAS, and it wouldn't end badly. Obviously this is not the case in the sliders, and what Boeing was suggesting were the multiple other systems that are found on the aircraft would take control and would stop anything bad happening, i.e. the plane pitching the nose down and heading straight for the ground like JT610 and ET302. Boeing though, despite being informed on multiple occasions by engineers, actually had their own evidence which showed an uncommanded MCAS activation that took place. In this report, it is said, Boeing also had evidence from its own test results showing that a test pilot took more than 10 seconds to respond to an uncommanded MCAS activation, a condition the pilot found to be catastrophic. The thing is, with the MCAS activation, Boeing was under the impression that for pilots, should it activate, it would be something that could easily be dealt with. Comparing it to the stabiliser trim runway, which is a known condition to all pilots, and involves the electric trim motor moving the horizontal stabiliser toward a full either nose up or nose down stop. MCAS, though, would turn out to be far worse than this. 
despite the major red flags with the new bit of software that was implemented on the aircraft. This report though went into the MCAS operation further and how it would activate without control, saying, while Boeing considered the possibility of uncommanded MCAS operation as part of its functional hazard assessment, it did not evaluate all the potential alerts and indications that could accompany a failure that also resulted in uncommanded MCAS operation. Therefore, neither Boeing system safety assessment nor its simulator tests evaluated how the combined effect of alerts and indications might impact pilot's recognition of which procedures to prioritize in responding to an unintended MCAS operation. Findings found that in the situation where it took 10 seconds to fix the MCAS system being activated, panic filled the cockpit, but teamwork prevailed. For both JT610 and ET302, various alarms and warning lights were present during the final moments, and panic filled the cabin, with the pilots doing everything possible to fix an out-of-control aircraft plummeting straight towards the ground. This is a prospect no one wants to think of. It's an observation which played a key factor in the two incidences involving the type and also the investigations that followed. Boeing knew that if said pilots did not react quick enough to the MCAS activation, the plane's pitch would be pushed down. This was always a risk, and in the two cases, it was catastrophic. What makes matters worse is the 737 MAX chief project engineer actually approved MCAS without fully understanding what it was capable of, and in a sense that he didn't know it relied on the, on the data of a single sensor, and that's the AOA sensor that I've been talking about so much. In an interview with committee staff, Mr. Teal, the vice president of the 737 MAX, said that is correct to the committee saying, and just to refresh my recollection at the time that you approved MCAS, you were not aware that it operated from a single AOA sensor, you were not aware that it could activate repeatedly, and you were not aware that Boeing was aware that if a pilot didn't react in 10 seconds to an MCAS activation, that the result could be catastrophic. At the time, you signed with all this information that you were not aware of when you signed off MCAS. And to reiterate, he said, that is correct. This is coming from the vice president and chief project engineer of the 737 MAX. They have approved MCAS without actually knowing what it did. That is really the main takeaway I want you to take from this and all the information on the special focusing on MCAS. All these safety concerns, all these problems were either something Boeing was keeping from airlines or something they were unaware of themselves because they did not conduct the right tests or take the time to understand MCAS because they knew it would affect them financially and especially in delivering aircraft. Thank you very much again for tuning into another episode in this mini-series. I know the subject matter has been quite harsh and quite difficult, but at the end of the day, this is the truth and needs to be broadcast. Thank you very much. Episode 5, which should be going live tomorrow, will be focusing around the production pressures. I mentioned that in a very, very brief two-line paragraph in one of the earlier episodes, but I really want to spend an episode discussing the production pressures in this mini-series. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. If you have any thoughts on MCAS, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And until the next video, stay safe, be careful, and I will see you then. <laughs> <laughs>